This is a demo of Mango's new overlay features. I'm going to start by loading a high resolution MR image. And this image has 0.8 millimeter spacing in all three directions. I can now zoom up using the scroll. And we can also pan around within this window. Zoom it down to the right size. And zoom is shown at the top. Uh, let me open a surface that I previously built for this image. We'll make him a little larger. And then zoom in on the surface a little bit more. Okay, so let me pick the overlay for this particular study. So this is an individual study done with uh, fMRI. Uh, the overlay is a 128 by 128 by 70 image, and the image is, is a much higher resolution, much higher resolution, 224, 323. 208. This one's in 0.8 millimeters. This is in 2 millimeters. So I'm going to overlay this onto my image. And of course, it didn't overlay right. There's a couple things that have to be done to make the overlays work well. And we prefer to do overlays in a Taylor Act Brain standard space. In order to do that, I'll open up the tool we use to move things into Taylorac standard space and we've already saved the alignment file to do that. So I'll click on it and you see that the image got moved and so did the 3D surface. So that's part of what needs to be done. Now we need to uh, move from image space to world space so that both sets of overlays are, uh, from both images are now in register in world coordinate space. So we see that we have the overlay here, and we have the ac activity here, uh, one from a lower resolution device, and the surfaces from higher resolution device. Uh, and you can change the color table that you use with the overlay. You can change under the surface uh, how far from the surface you'll map things up. And presently, we're not very far away. We might change this to maybe five, five millimeters. And you can see it maps up a little bit more. So this is a nice feature to demonstrate uh, how overlays work moving from a low resolution functional image, uh, painting the active areas onto the surface of a high resolution image. There are a few other things you can do to help you visualize this. One is we can use a cut plane. And once we have the cut plane, we can see surfaces and uh, slices at the same time. Uh, Though the information is not particularly helpful in, in this format, uh, I'm going to add one other feature here, and that's to build a shape uh, from the overlay. And we'll take the same threshold to build a shape. Now you can see the shapes extending out in 3D space above the slice. I'm going to change a few of the features of, of this shape. I'll first of all make it transparent so we can see the slices and the surfaces through it. And then secondly, I'm going to do the overlay onto it as well. So now we have similar color mapping onto the uh, shapes as we have plotted onto the surfaces as overlays. And we can see the actual data inside the images. So sometimes it's useful to add a few more cut planes. Uh, we'll stay up in this area. And let's add the sagittal as well. And we want to be here. And I'm going to move the sagittal plane in a little further. So, and we should perhaps move this one down a little more, but stay like that. Okay. So now we get a, a reasonable idea of the 3D distribution of the brain activity in this particular study. Uh, this is a study involving uh, finger sequence learning of the left hand. Uh, there's one other feature that we can turn on to help you see things a little bit better, and I'll scoot this guy over for that. Under surface, we can change the appearance of the surface color so that it's transparent. Now we can see other areas where we have shapes drawn throughout the brain. And so the nice feature here is that we can see the slices, we can see the surfaces, and we can see the shapes all at the same time. So this is uh, a fairly nice feature for uh, 
mango in terms of giving overlays and turning overlays into shapes and giving you a lot of tools for 3D visualization. I'd like to show you one other uh, kind of interesting feature. Uh, you don't have to have things in Taylor X space to do the overlays. And so let me open uh, this image. So this is the uh, MNI 152 T1 one millimeter brain that we got from the FSL uh, site. And notice that the lower level display here is fairly high. The high, highest value in the image is around 8,000. So that's a nice contrasty image. Here we also built an, a surface. Not quite as much detail, but again, this is an average image from 152 people. Uh, and we threshold it at, at about 60% of the max. and still have a nice surface to look at. Also from this website are a number of atlases and things that we can use to overlay. And these atlases are basically images. Uh, and so I'm going to overlay on this particular atlas and change the color a bit. So we have a nice interesting distinction uh, color-wise of the major lows determined in sort of probabilistic manner. Uh, and you can see the central sulcus well here. You can see it well on this side. See all the lobes. See the cerebellum.